Hey folks, this is Chris with Oregon Figs. It's October 2nd, 2022, and this is Aishia Black, and it's just starting to color up. And uh, this is a mid-season fig for, for us out here. Just starting to get soft, so I'm gonna guess it's about five days away from harvest but this is in a year with a terrible cold wet spring and we may still be getting figs this year so this is one it has the pink tag pink tag means it's going in ground next year not really going in ground totally for the uh, main crop I've had the brave off of this and it's fantastic so I'm putting it in ground for potentially both but brave was my number one thought so that's the report on that Red Lebanese Bacaw Valley just continues to pump out the figs. I've probably have had a couple dozen figs off the tree, and it's just absolutely loaded. Sasha, be good. Sasha. So it's, I mean, I don't know how many figs are on this tree, but it's absolutely loaded with figs. My protector back there, Sasha's having something bother her. So once again, just absolutely loaded. Um, this is Sao Miguel Rocho. There's a strange fig for you. Mule fig. Can get some sun on it, there we go. So it's a mule fig, two have formed as one. And I had a fig off of this tree today and it was really, really good, real sweet. And your typical Mount Etna, the difference is, and I've explained this before, is they'll, that Sao Miguel Rocho, AKA Azores Dark, the figs are smaller. They're nowhere near as big as Red Lebanese. The tree isn't as prolific, but it's a Mount Etna and it's delicious, just like all the Mount Etnas. I was considering culling this one, but I may end up actually putting it in the ground to kind of continue the comparison. This one actually is fairly good sized here, these two similar to uh, the size you get with uh, Red Lebanese Bacaw Valley. Here's something kind of interesting. This is Borgesat Grease. This is uh, one that I did a video of earlier this year doing a severe root pruning. That is a large fig right there. And it's getting soft. I have a buddy coming out from Maryland who's actually up in Portland right now. And uh, he may get to try these with me. So this is, once again, ripening without a head start, uh, just in a microclimate in Oregon, in a really bad year. So could you put this one in ground? I I'm not going to, but I think you could, and I think occasionally in a really good long year you'd get figs. So this is another one. It's kind of, to me, it seems mid-season, along with Aishia Black, seems mid-season. Um, I would say Red Lebanese and uh, Sao Miguel Rocho, aka Azores Dark, are probably a little bit earlier, earlier than this. They're not um, straight mid-season. They might be like early slash mid-season, right in, in between there. So anyways, that's the, the video for today. Oh, what the heck, let's go ahead and open one up. Got some that are just absolutely perfect. Uh, Sasha, knock it off. There's a good one. She feels, Sasha feels she has to protect me. Okay. That's a good, just a, a really a beautiful fig. Reasonably priced. This is just such a must-have variety for people starting out. Not as sweet as they can be because we had a couple days of rain. Nice seed crunch. Um, once again, that rain really affects them. That's why we're so spoiled when we usually get these because we get these at a time typically where there's absolutely no rain and they're just sugar bombs. That one wasn't so much of a sugar bomb. Good, but 
water down. I'm spoiled, I know. I know. Now see the, <clears throat> I think the San Miguel Rochos might be a little sweeter right now because they're a later fig and they, they didn't ripen during the rain. They've been ripening after the rain. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take one of the San Miguel Rochos off. There it is, pretty blue tint. Really pretty fig. Typical Mount Etna. I'm gonna guess this is gonna be sweeter than the last one because the last one started ripening before this did. And it is, it's sweeter. Very, very good. You know, they're Mount Etnas, and they're all so similar. The differences are such sl slight nuances, and for one person to proclaim one is, for taste is just vastly superior to the rest, I don't think they've eaten a lot of figs, or at least they've not eaten a lot of good figs. I've eaten a lot of these figs. Oh, let's go, what the heck, let's go ahead and get another one. If I can get a really small one out of Red Lebanese that's perfectly ripened, that would probably be a better comparison. The bigger ones, I think, have absorbed more water. And like I say, it's a bigger fig, so if I can find a small fig on the tree, it will probably be more in line with that Sal Miguel. Oh, I think I found it. Yeah. It's got that twisting of the, of the stem. Nice tight eye. Let's go ahead and give that one a peek. Yeah, it looks nicely ripened. We've got that beautiful tight eye, that's a bluish hint. I think you'd be hard pressed if I pulled one of these off the tree that was ripened just like this and one of the Sal Miguel Rochos. I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference which is which. And I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference in flavor. So isn't that a gorgeous fig? I'm gonna guess this one's gonna be sweeter than the first one I picked. Hmm. It is, but it has a little bit of an, a, a break component to it. I think it's because it started ripening when we had a couple of rainy days. That makes, that makes a difference. I know it sounds crazy, but if a, a fig starts to swell and totally ripens without any moisture, it becomes something that is spectacular. This is very good. So there you have it. Mount Etnas are wonderful. Is one so great that it should be getting a premium price versus the, the others? At this point, I'm not really cer certain that's the case. I think you get one, you grow it outright, do a good job of growing it, and uh, you have a chance of having a spectacular fig. But don't buy into the hype that Azores Dark is, you know, worth a premium over any other Mount Etna variety. It's just not true. And it, it's smaller, which gives it an advantage in a hot, humid place. But is it better? They're all so good. And you see how I'm say, what I'm saying about how just the difference of ripening, completely ripening without any influence of the rain versus a couple days of the rain makes a big difference. That is just a true statement. Anyways, this is Chris with Oregon Figs. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope to have a few more. Got uh, my buddy Steve is going to be tasting some figs with me here hopefully in the next few days. And we'll see if we can get uh, a crows. I've got some crows coming on. And I've had one of those, and it was incredibly sweet as well. See you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you're so inclined. Thank you.